Coming up on show 631, a special edition. Today's show is mostly about the start of production of the Volkswagen ID3. We're also talking about the original e-Golf as well for the US market, the BMW X3 plug-in and a diesel ban. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to the show, show 631. My name is Martin Lee, and this is what happened on Monday, 4th of November. I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Thank you, as always, to myev.com for helping make this show. In the USA, myev will help you buy a used car. If it has a plug socket, maybe it'll help you sell one. Or maybe, just for now, if you're EV curious, it'll help you learn about them. Check out myev.com. And now a special message from TriEV. On this show, you've previously heard of Gerard from TriEV here in the UK. And if you'd like to know more about their business, you can, of course, find TriEV online. And I'm delighted to tell you the news that I've, I've kind of known unofficially off the record for a long time. They are finally going to Crowdcube for crowdfunding their business model. TriEV aims to transform what is the electric car purchasing process, educating people in this country, the in the UK, on owning an EV and igniting EV interest amongst the wider public. TriEV promotes Electrify to Buy. It's a platform to enable customers to learn, compare, customise and ultimately experiment with EVs before they ever make a buying decision. So, What's Gerard doing with TriEV? Well, he wants to scale the business and the brand is raising funds to invest in pop-up retail facilities to get key talent involved, to facilitate, uh, facilitate partnerships, even working with leasing companies. He's got some really big plans for TriEV and I promised him that I would pass on the message to you on this podcast that if you are looking to be a, a smaller supporter of £10, you can do that. But if you want to be an investor, and lots of people I know use things like Crowdcube to invest, to get shares in companies uh, with all the usual disclaimers applying, of course, of doing your own due diligence and research. Find out more about their revenue model with memberships, sales commissions, test drives, and ultimately credit as well. Uh, starting in London, working their way uh, wider. Crowdcube.com slash try EV. If you are curious, crowdcube.com slash try EV. If you do check it out, let me know your thoughts as well, because I've spent some time uh, looking at what uh, the business he's building there. I've been really impressed, but uh, I'd love to know more from you if you have some thoughts. Right, let's talk about the big story of the start of the week then production starting of the Volkswagen ID3 in. Zwickau. From VW themselves, we'll start with this. Today saw the official start of series production of the ID301, the first car in the new generation of electric vehicles. It was a white ID3 and it rolled off the assembly line, watched by Federal Chancellor Dr. Angela Merkel and the group's CEO, Dr. Herbert Diess. The Volkswagen Group plans to sell some 22 million EVs worldwide by 2028, thus helping EVs make the breakthrough. Zwickau has a key role to play in this endeavour. For the first time, a large car manufacturing plant is being entirely converted to e-mobility. With investments running at 1.2 billion, Zwickau is scheduled to produce 100,000 electric models next year. And yes, yes, I'll just break into the press release here to say it is not lost on me that VW says this is the first time in the world that a traditional car plant has been converted to fully electric production. Yes the old car plant that Tesla bought and converted into e-mobility. I think that ticks that box, but VW insist they're the first ones to do it. But let's move on. Let's not cause controversy so early in the podcast. Uh, there are 100,000 electric models from next year. From 2021, 330,000 EVs will leave the assembly line each year, making the site the largest and most efficient EV factory in Europe and a trailblazer in the transformation of Volkswagen's global production network. There's going to be a phase transformation of Zwickau. Volkswagen is fully converting a large car manufacturing plant to fully electric cars for the first time. 1.2 billion being invested in the conversion, like I say, final expansion stage in 2021, when there'll be six models from three group brands being built there. We know VW is one of them. We know Audi is one of them. We know Seat is in there as well. Qualification measures are preparing... All 8,000 employees for the move to EV production and working with high-voltage technology. In total, the Zwickau team will have completed 13,000 training days by the end of next year, ensuring 
future proofing of jobs at the plant. Well, the Volkswagen ID3 is going to be available in three battery options. Usable 45 kilowatt hour with 33 k 330 kilometers of range. Mid range is going to be 58 kilowatt hours usable. That's going to have 420 k's. And long range is 77 kilowatt hours usable with 550 kilometers of range. And according to Te uh, Pedro at Push EVs, the Chinese battery maker CATL intends to start European production by the end of next year near Erfurt, the capital of the German state uh, that it's in. Uh, his guess is that CATL will produce the standard range battery pack. Therefore, don't expect the entry-level variant to be available anytime next year. That'll come 2021. The Volkswagen ID3 seems to be the only electric car with production figures that can go anywhere near matching Tesla's Model 3 by 2021. Most electric cars, or many of them actually, have pretty low production figures that prove they're, at the moment, vanity projects for automakers that aren't serious about EVs. According to the industry analyst Matthias Schmitz, who I follow on Twitter, today the production rate on a single morning shift at the factory of the ID3 is 30 cars per day. And no, that's not a lot. We'll come on to that. It will gradually increase over the ramp up phase to uh, not encounter any setbacks along the way. When they ramp up, it'll be 800 cars a day on one production line over three shifts. That's happening in spring. It says inside EVs, interestingly, when the second production line goes online, up to 1,500 electric cars will be produced over three shifts. Well, that'll be enough to fulfill the target of making that 330,000 annual figure that I mentioned. Volkswagen's also testing production of other models in Zwickau. They're going to make the Seat, the Spanish bit of VW, the Seat Elborn, which is basically the ID3 could be a little bit cheaper. Seats tend to be a bit cheaper than the VW brand itself. Although, you know what, the styling, because the Seat engineers, the Seat designers have done their own take on the front, I like it more. The front of the ID3 is, is all too soft and bulbous for my personal tastes, and, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The Seat Elborn, I think, is nice. I think it's sharper, crisper. A little more aggressive, you could say. And the Volkswagen ID4, currently known as the ID Cross with all the Zs. An Audi model is coming next summer as well in 2020. That'll be using production line two. And that leaves us with two more free slots. Gus at Inside EVs has a take on why that production line is starting at just 30 cars per day. The ID3 production started eight months before the promised delivery dates. Customers won't get their cars till next summer, but with four times more anticipation than a regular car would require, normally production would start two, three months before mass deliveries, not eight months. The plant at the moment must be, it must remember, the plant is not entirely dedicated to EVs. They're splitting it. It's a little bit fossil, a little bit EV. And whether that's a coincidence or not, but the deliveries for the ID3 start precisely when the final fossil car rolls off the production line at Zwickau and it becomes purely EV. Now, Inside EVs contacted Volkswagen for comment and they got one more reason that production is starting so early. They said, and this is not very contentious, but rather predictable, that they want to make sure that they get the ID3 right in every sense. So it's counting on its employees to learn how to make EVs. Why they're starting eight months before mainstream delivery, or uh, mass delivery start rather than two or three months. I'll pop links to all those stories in the show notes. If you'd like to read more, a really momentous day today. Uh, like I say, they are the only one at the moment planning such massive numbers, but lots of other car makers do have some big plans in the works. Staying with VW, though, uh, Volkswagen's ceremony celebrating the start of the ID3. The CEO, Herbert Diess, made several comments on electrification of the industry. In particular, he believes that batteries, and he knows more than nearly anyone else in the world because he's signing off the checks on these things, he stated that batteries, rather than hydrogen, are the way it's quicker, it's cheaper to reduce emissions. He called for a price on carbon and committed to reducing his company's carbon emissions by 30% by 2025, zero carbon by 2050, says Electric. The German Chancellor Angela Merkel 
also spoke at the event and she called for the German government to increase EV incentives and set a target for the country to install a million public charging stations in the next 11 years. They want 7 to 10 million EVs on the German roads by the year 2030. And our last story on VW today. For its last model year, the e-Golf won't make an appearance in Europe because we get the ID3. But in the USA, you don't get the ID3. You have to wait for the ID4. So you get another edition of the Volkswagen e-Golf. And it's worse. Well, sort of. For the last model year, the e-Golf actually gets two miles less range than the current one, says Green Car Reports. Official EPA range for the 2020 Golf is down to 123 miles from 125 miles for the one that's been on sale for the last two, three years or so. Likewise, efficiency figures for the model changes as well, uh, from 119 down to 113 uh, MPGE. Now, the spokesman Mark Gillies confirmed there's no change in the tech in the 2020 e-Golf. Uh, it's all coming down to changes in EPA testing procedures, you see. Real-world range between vehicles of two model years should be identical. It's just the way the numbers are worked out by the EPA. Let's talk BMW next. While the automotive world is awaiting the debut of the all-electric BMW X3, next year, the iX3. Uh, they've quietly introduced a plug-in hybrid powertrain for the X3. Initially previewed earlier this year, you can now get your hands on the X3. Oh, BMW have such long names, bear with me. Uh, the X3 xDrive 30e PHEV, set to enter production at BMW's Spartanburg plant next month, going on sale worldwide next spring. According to Motor1.com, integrated into the transmission is an electric motor with 108, 109 horsepower, I think, on that one. 80 kilowatts, isn't it? Uh, a number most customers will be after, though, is the range. WLTP would have near a 30, but BMW America off to say that actually they'd be happier saying 20 miles of pure electric range on the plug-in version of the X3. Of course, the X3, a very popular car, very desirable SUV as well, and it sells bucket loads too. So if you don't want the combustion engine to be kicking in, you got 20 miles before you need to plug in again. Final story, bit of good news. I love good news stories like this. I love getting pumped about just brilliant bits of news like this. There's a city in the southwest of England called Bristol, and they will become the first city to ban diesel cars from their streets to tackle illegal levels of air pollution. Bristol City Council have just voted to remove privately owned diesel cars from the city from 7 in the morning to 3 p.m. every day. According to Chris Lilly at Next Green Car, the scheme still needs government approval, but it will start in 2021. Any diesel entering the zone within that time band won't actually be banned. They're not exactly going to stop you coming in, but it's going to be a big hefty fine. So it's more of a, they're trying to dissuade you to do it rather than a total ban. Uh, vehicles used by emergency services will be exempt. Commercial vehicles will have to pay to enter the area. They're going to use number plate recognition systems to enforce the system. Uh, throw details of the fine hasn't been set yet. Uh, the zone comes into force in 2021. It's expected air pollution levels will go to compliant levels, i.e. there won't be illegal levels that they are at the moment by the year 2025, just from banning, well, setting hefty fines for anything with a diesel engine. There aren't too many diesel hybrids out there as well, so I don't think any EV or hybrid owner is going to be too badly affected. Let's get on to our question of the week this week. So, set by myev.com, what do you prefer? Is it the carrot or the stick? i.e. do you prefer incentives for EV drivers or do you prefer penalties for polluters? Let me know your thoughts. Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on the YouTube show or Facebook. Thank you to 255 patrons of the podcast. Without you, you wouldn't be listening to this. My premium partners are Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby and Avid Technology. There are... 630 shows in the archive. New ones will be in your podcast feed. If you hit subscribe in your podcast app, uh, get this on Apple, Google, Spotify, and everywhere else. Come and say hi on Facebook 
all the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you soon. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.